Hi, George here. And in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be adding this person holding this phone to this concert image in behind, looking like they're taking video of that concert. We'll be using this picture here and also this picture here as our main background picture. And before we start this project, I just wanted to mention that I'm setting up a new channel just for my photo and video followers. Let me bring that up. And this right here is called HTG Photo. And again, just for my photo and video followers, all the gaming stuff is going to be staying on the old channel, and this new channel is dedicated to all of this great video content. Now, if you don't want to miss out on any of the future videos, make sure you go over here and subscribe. I'll put a link for that in the description. For a while, I'll be doing every other video on this site. Once I hit 1,500 subscribers, right now we're at 15, then I'll be switching over here full time. Check the description. Make sure you click on that link to subscribe to that new channel. Now, to do this project, we're going to take this phone image right here. I'll just drag it down here so it's a floating window like that. If you don't have that enabled, go up to Edit, come down here to Preferences and General, and then it's that checkbox right there, Allow Floating Documents in Export Mode. Make sure that, that is checked. Choose OK. You can then float your window. Now, the reason for this is that we can easily take this background and drag it over here into the other project window right there. Close that down, and now everything is here inside of this one project. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to make a selection around the hand and the phone and use that to hide the background. You can use any technique you want that works out well for you. We'll do this one over here by using the quick selection tool, which works out pretty well most of the time. It will take some cleanup, but that's fine. Now with this tool, you just click and drag in an area, and the Photoshop Elements tries to find everything else that matches for what you're dragging over, and does a really good job in most cases if you have nice clean separation between your different areas, in this case, there is a good separation between the foreground and that background. Now to bring in more, just make sure that the Add option is selected. And then just work around and come in here and then Paint In. And Photoshop Elements will come in and do a nice clean job on that. Again, it depends upon your image, how much separation there is between the foreground and the background. In this case, there is a good separation. So this is a nice tool to use in this particular case. It's very quick, as you can see. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. And a little bit more right up in here. There we go. We'll double check that. And then right over in here. And this whole center section has to be selected as well. There we go. That's all good. And then we need to get the cable or cord right down there. Now, when I made the selection, we also pulled in some other stuff that I don't want. So let's just switch this over here to subtract. And I'll click into these areas here. And we take out a little bit. If it goes too far, just go back and then touch up again. All right, that's pretty good. Let's now come in closer and do a little bit of cleanup on this. So I use the zoom tool. I think we're okay over here pretty well. It's a little bit off right down here. So go back to that tool again and I'll just bring it right along that edge and that should do a nice cleanup right in there. There we go. Hold the space bar down to move the image and let's just make sure that's all good. I want to get rid of this little bit here, so bring my size down to about half of that and back to subtract, and we'll just get in there. Now it's a bit odd here. It's so close to the background that I can't easily select that. So we'll just change our tools here. I'll go over here to the next tool. This is the Selection Brush tool, and I can now just carefully brush right along that edge and bring that in. There you go. That's good. So a little bit right here which is outside. That looks fine. I'm just looking at where the selection line is. That's a little bit off right up in here. I can freehand this, I think, and just bring that back in again. There we go. It's a bit outside. Back to subtract. Let's just knock that bit off right there. That's where that side button is. That's a little bit weird up across the top here. We can clean this up on the layer mask. And again, I'll come back over here to the add. My usual technique is to go through and make my basic selection like I'm doing right now and then go back and do any really good cleanup on the layer mask. That's a real easy way to do this. Okay, so I'm pretty good here. A little bit here to get rid of. Again, back to subtract. And this just knock a little bit of that off right there. The nice thing about these brushes is that they're very natural, very easy way that makes a lot of sense for this kind of selection. So if you like using brush tools, this is a great way to come in here and make selections. It's very easy to understand. Okay, that looks good. Now down here, I need to remove some of that. And again, I'm just freehanding this right now. Now I have been asked if I'm using a stylus and a tablet, and I'm not. This is a mouse. Now it's a gaming mouse, so it has a bit more detail 
to a bit better resolution. But the main thing that helps me do this is that I have a wrist pad, a wrist rest for my mouse pad. And my hand is resting on the wrist rest and then I'm moving the mouse just with my fingers, not with my hands. So I have very fine control that way. Okay, there's our selection. Okay, let's zoom back out to fit screen. And then go up here to the add layer mask button. Here's our layer mask. And that looks really nice actually. Now down here is a bit softer inside the picture. So I may want to soften that edge up right along here. And you can do that by going up here and let's just grab the blur tool, which is right here. And I'm on the layer mask side. And you can actually blur the layer mask down a little bit. And it just softens up that edge. Sometimes this helps just to kind of clean things up. All right, that helps in there. Now down here, it's a little bit off as you can see. You need to clean that up. So let's clean it up on the layer mask. I'll zoom in here again. There's a little bit of a halo showing right around here. Now on the layer mask, black hides and white show. So I'll go to the paintbrush. I have black as my foreground color. Here's my paintbrush, it's a bit too large. I'll use the left square bracket key to bring that size down. And I'm just gonna again freehand this. I'm just painting black on the layer mask and that hides that little bit of a halo right there that's showing and we'll just take that piece out here we go and right up around in here that looks good and just a little bit right down on this side okay that looks fine let's now check out the rest of our edges in here a little bit right down through here let's knock that off that finger looks good that's okay in here that's fine some of these little light areas on the side, I can leave them in. They're not as critical because they could be reflections coming in off of the stage. Now the straight edge, if you want to be really exact on this, just grab your polygonal lasso tool and then make a straight edge right along that side and then come out and around like this back to the beginning, back to your paintbrush, and then you can paint inside that selection, making it really accurate. And then control D to deselect. There we go, that's fine. Across the top, that needs a bit of fixing in here. I'll use that polygonal lasso tool again. And from the left-hand side, I'll just come around. When you're using this tool, you're putting down dots and then Photoshop Elements is connecting the lines. So be careful with this thing. Don't click too quickly or your selection is going to collapse and you have to start over again. So just take your time, breathe normally, don't rush it, and you'll do a real nice job. If you get a curve, you just place your dots closer together if you're getting out into a straight, then you can get further apart. And let's just go ahead and pull this straight down at this point. Pull the space bar down to move the whole thing. And I'll pull right down here so I have a good spot to work from. And then back up around again, space bar, and then back around to where we started, which was right over here someplace, right there. Back to the paintbrush, and then just painting black on the layer mask. And the nice thing about doing it this way is if I'm not happy with the results, I can always go back to the layer mask and I can repaint it out using white and put it back in again. So we can take it out by painting black, put it in by painting white. Okay, that looks good. Control D to deselect and I think we're okay there. A little bit right down here. That's not that critical. Everything else looks pretty good. Hand looks fine. And I think that is in the stage set. Yes, it is. That's okay. All right, back to fit screen. And that part of this is done. Now, we need to cut a hole inside of the phone right in here. So I'll zoom in on that upper left-hand corner. There we go. And for this, we're gonna be using the polygonal lasso tool. Now you could say, why don't you use the rectangular one? And that's because I don't think that the phone is exactly straight. It looks like it's a little bit lower on this side than it is on this side. So the rectangular tool is not gonna work, but the lasso tool will, the polygonal, just click on a corner. Take it straight across, click your next corner, hold the space bar down, move your image, come down to the next corner down here and click space bar, move your image, next corner, which is right over here and click space bar down, move the image again and then back up to your starting point. There we go. Now this is, again, on the layer mask side, I'll hold the space bar down, move it over here just a bit and I'm gonna back it off just a little bit like that. So I want to paint black into this area. So back to our paintbrush, we have black already. Now I can go much larger on this. This is the right square bracket, go larger on your brush size. Then just paint black into that area. Make sure you catch the whole thing. 
and we're basically just cutting a hole, but we're doing it on the layer mask side, so I can go back and adjust it if I want to. This should work out just fine in here. There we go. Okay, so go back to fit screen, and then control D to deselect. So far, so good. Now, I don't want to have this picture exactly the same size as back there. I want to have it reduced in size. So come down to the background layer, right click on that and duplicate your layer, choose OK. There's now duplicate in here. Now grab the move tool and notice that we have control handles in the corners. If you're not seeing your control handles, hold the control T keyboard shortcut down and that brings your control handles up for sure. Grab a handle and let's just pull this down until the image is just a little bit larger than the hole in there, kind of like that. That's a pretty good spot right here. And I can move that back and forth. And I think right in there is a nice spot. There we go, choose OK. Now I don't want this outside stuff showing. So I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool now and come just outside of the screen area and drag a marquee down like that, just outside again. Click on the layer mask and that hides the outside I also see a big hole showing up right down here. It's fixed up. That's on the original layer mask and that's up here. So let's zoom in on that. So back to the black paintbrush, reverse colors. Let's make sure we're on our layer mask side here and paint that out. And if you move layers around, double check your color over here. Sometimes this will swap on you if you're not careful. Okay, that looks good. Back to fit screen. I want to blur out the background because the foreground should be in focus. The background should be out of focus. So let's go to our background layer. I don't want to do that on the original, so right click and duplicate your layer again. Hide the original just in case we mess things up. And then go up to Filter, come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And here we go, you can choose how much blur you want. I want a pretty good size blur in there, kind of like that. So it looks like the phone is in focus and our camera seeing this is focused on the phone and not the background. That's fine. Now the whole hand here is far too bright for being inside of this dark theater. So we need to darken down the hand and that's our top layer right here. And for that, go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels versus use previous layer. Check that, choose okay. And the middle control here is your midtones. Going to the right is going to darken the image down. So just pull that down. That looks more naturalistic in here. I think that looks pretty good. And I'll bring my blacks a bit darker. Again, that kind of tones things down and it looks more like that hand is actually in the scene now and photographing that stage from a darkened theater. If you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, check out the description down below for my complete training for Photoshop Elements. And don't forget to check out the new channel which is dedicated just to photo and video so you won't miss out on any of the future videos coming up. I'll be doing that switch slowly here. It'll take a few months for the final switch to go through, but as soon as I hit 1,500 subscribers, then I'll be switching over there permanently for this type of video.